thanks for watching and today I would like to talk about the winding number of the curve and uh, which intuitively measures how much the curve rotates about a point. So intuitively, and I think it's easiest to explain with a picture, intuitively, suppose for example we have a circle or something, or maybe even some weird curve that starts like that and goes like that. Well, intuitively, this curve it rotates around zero, zero only once. So we would like to define a winding number to be such that the winding number of this curve is one. Or, for example, consider the following curve. Like it's always a winding number about the origin. To do it with a different point just do by translation. And for example, if you have this curve, I have to draw it more carefully, so it goes like this. So you see it loops around the zero, zero once, and then it loops around it twice, like this. Well, intuitively, we would like to say that the winding number of that curve is two. Winding number equals to two. The question is, how do we go about this? And let me give you some intuition from multivariables. So in particular, let's talk a bit about polar coordinates again. So here's some motivation. Again, remember polar coordinates. So suppose, for example, you have the circle, right? The circle, the winding number in this case is 1. And suppose you have a point x, y. Then again, this is your triangle. This is x, this is y. And in particular, let's look at the angle. And notice the best way of measuring this rotation is with that angle. Because intuitively we would like to say, well, the winding number is 1 if the angle just changes by 2 pi in one revolution. The winding number is 2 if the angle changes by 2 times 2 pi. And the question is, how can we write the angle in terms of x, y? Well, remember, by Soka Toa, tangent of theta is y over x, so theta is arctangent of y over x. So intuitively then, given a curve c, so suppose this is your curve c, intuitively, given a curve c, we want to integrate this function arctangent of y over x over c which doesn't quite make sense well technically it does because you can integrate functions over curves but uh, instead what we can do we can define you know, the gradient of that function so uh, call this f. So maybe let me be more precise. We want to integrate the derivative of that function over c because once we integrate that, we get the angle at the end minus the angle at the beginning. So instead, consider now the gradient of f. Let me do f prime. Okay, and uh, consider the gradient of f. And we call that capital F. So what is that? That is the gradient of arctangent of y over x with respect to x and arctangent of y over x with respect to y. Now, let's use the Chen Lu as always. So the derivative is 1 plus y over x squared 
that's a derivative of arctangent. Now we want to differentiate that with respect to x. So the y is just constant, and 1 over x becomes minus 1 over x squared. That's one thing. And now let's do the same spiel, but with arctangent of y over x with respect to x. So that becomes, again, 1 over 1 plus y over x squared. And then just differentiate this with respect to y, and it just becomes 1 over x. It's very ugly, but you can simplify this. So uh, this then becomes so minus y over so x squared times 1 plus x squared times y over x, so y squared, and then 1 over x plus y squared over x squared times x, so y over x. And you can simplify this a bit further. So minus y over x squared plus y squared, 1 over x squared plus y squared over x. And that becomes minus y over x squared plus y squared, and x over x squared plus y squared. And notice what is this? It's just a vector with two components, which we like to call a vector field. And in particular, vector fields are nice because we can integrate them of, of, of we can integrating along curves. And in particular, this is a um, a rigorous way of saying you integrate the derivative of the function because for a multivariable function, it doesn't really make sense to say the derivative, but it makes sense to say the gradient. Okay, so here's now our definition of the winding number. I know, it sounds like whining number, like, ah, I'm so sad, but no, it's a very happy number. So, definition. Winding number is simply 1 over 2 pi times the integral of that vector field. And we can just write it in terms of components as 1 over 2 pi integral of minus y over x squared plus y squared dx plus x over x squared plus y squared dy. Okay. And we'll also we'll apply it to a circle and see that it's 1. But just for those aficionados for multivariable calculus, uh, sure, the vector field f is conservative. Right, because we've just shown it's the gradient of arctangent of y over x, but it does not imply that the line integral over any closed curve is zero because that vector field is undefined at zero, zero. Undefined at zero, zero. So can say integral of f dotted with dr equals to zero. So that fact where you integrate f over a curve, closed curve, and you get zero if it's conservative, this only holds for simply connected domains, namely domains that don't, don't have holes. And this is super interesting because you think of it as a drawback that it's, you don't get zero in the end. But it turns out here it's a feature so it's kind of interesting. It's like you have this anomaly, but this anomaly is actually quite useful. And in fact, let me illustrate now that the winding number of a circle is 1. And just to simplify, let's take the unit circle. Works for anything. But so the unit circle of radius 1, you can parameterize this as x of t equals to cosine t y of t equals to sine t, t is from 0 to 2 pi. Then let's see, the winding number is 1 over 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi, of this thing, so minus, if you want, minus sine of t. 
over cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t. dx, what is that? It just means x prime of t if you want dx over dt, dt. So it becomes also minus sine of t, dt, plus x, so cosine of t over cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t, cosine of t, dt. And here's a nice thing, it looks horrible, but this is 1 and this is 1. And we're left with 1 over 2 pi, then integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2 pi. <laughs> integral from 0 to 2 pi of uh, sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t dt. And I get 1 over 2 pi. So this becomes 1. And so you get 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi. And that's 1. And so in particular, we've just shown that the winding number of the circle of radius 1 is just 1. And in fact, it works, right? Because the circle, it just winds around once around the origin. And by the way, it turns out, you can sort of use Green's theorem to show that this is the same for any you know, simple closed curve around the origin. So even for a curve like that, that doesn't have any loops, it's still the same answer as the circle. And the way you do this, you've shown that it's true for the unit circle, and then you just connect your curve. Maybe something like that or something. Yeah. Okay, and not only that, the cool thing is, uh, you can also extend it to complex curves. And by the way, you can also show for other kinds of loops that the winding number is like two, three, or something, but you would need parametrizations for that, for which I don't have any available right now. Uh, but just a little remark. In fact, this extends to complex curves. So note, for a complex curve, so I'm seeing a curve in the complex numbers. So you can think of it this, this way. So you have a curve C. And again, this is x and y. And then you have just some parametrization, you know, gamma of t or something. Uh, yeah, so you have some closed curve gamma. It turns out you can define the winding number of this curve also very easily, namely the winding number is equal to integral 1 over 2 pi i of the integral of 1 over z dz. So it turns out that the winding number around the origin is the integral over c of 1 over z dz. And it turns out, I want to show now that it's actually almost the same as our definition. Because what's that equal to? So that is 1 over 2 pi i integral of c of what is z is x plus i y dz. Okay, and that's 1 over 2 pi i. Now, it's not good to have i's on the denominator, so let's multiply it by x minus i y over x minus i y dz. And that's 1 over 2 pi i integral over c of x minus i y and then x squared minus a squared minus b squared is x squared minus i squared y squared so x squared plus y squared dz okay and then that just equals to almost the same as before but it looks a bit different but Here's where this i comes in now. So that becomes 1 over 2 pi i. Again, we don't like i in the denominator, so let's multiply it by minus i. Integral over c of x minus i y over x squared plus y squared dz. And 
that's because minus i over 2 pi. Integral of x minus i y over x squared plus y squared dz. Okay, and then you can put the minus i inside, so it's 1 over 2 pi. Integral over c of minus i x over x squared plus y squared, then minus, so plus, and then minus y over x squared plus y squared. Dz, but now here comes the upshot. Remember z equals to x plus i y, and so dz is dx plus i dy. And what we would like to do now, we would like to separate all those things into real and imaginary parts. So let's just foil it out. So 1 over 2 pi, integral over c of, for example, minus y over x squared plus y squared dx, so that is real, and then minus i times i x plus, plus x over x squared plus y squared dy, and then plus i times, if you want, minus x over x squared plus y squared dx, and minus y over x squared plus y squared dy. And here comes a cool thing. I don't know if you recognize this, but this was precisely the first term of the winding number for what, of the thing we talked about at the beginning. So this is, I like to call it the real winding number. winding number, which is just 1 over 2 pi i, integral over c of 1 over z dz, is just an extension of the previous formula, but for complex curves. And if you have a real curve, this would just be 0. However, on the other hand, this is absolutely important in complex analysis, because this is, for example, what makes Cauchy's integral formal work and everything. So, it's super, super important, and this has applications in algebraic topology, for example, but this is a bit beyond my knowledge, so I'm just scraping the surface here. Uh, all right, so if you like this and you want to see more math, please click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.